Have you ever lied to your dentist about flossing? Well, they probably know. How do they know? Well, they could be taking a guess and they'll probably be right since only about 30% of people actually floss their teeth. But there's actually more to it than that. Dentists can pretty much instantly tell if you floss no matter what you say. So in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the dead giveaways that we look for to see if you're a regular flosser or if you're just flossing right before your appointment. Number one and the immediate red flag is if your gums bleed. If you're coming in and your gums are red or they're more puffy or they're more swollen or they start bleeding the second we touch them, then that's a pretty much obvious sign you do not floss your teeth. The bottom line is healthy gums should not bleed. You might say, well, obviously my gums are gonna bleed if you're coming at me with those sharp instruments and poking around. Well, here's the thing. There is a pocket that's naturally around your gums. This pocket is called the sulcus. Now this sulcus is what we're actually measuring every single year to help check for things like gum disease. Now gently going into this pocket and measuring your gums should not cause them to bleed. Now what does this have to do with flossing? Well, when you floss, you're removing plaque. So plaque is this biofilm of bacteria that build up on your teeth. So pretty much right after you're cleaning, you start to get these bacteria that start building up on your teeth. If you're not cleaning this away, then your gums are gonna start to get inflamed because your body will start to sense this bacteria that's building up around your gums. It's gonna try to fight it. So now you're gonna have all this inflammation going around in your gums and that's gonna cause them to bleed a lot more. Now when you're flossing, you're gonna be cleaning away all this plaque and all these bacteria. Now ideally you'll do something called C-shaped flossing where instead of just going up and down in between your teeth, you're actually wrapping that floss around your tooth in a C shape and going up and down underneath your gums. And then you go on the other side and then clean again up and down underneath your gums on the other side. You should do this between every single tooth in your mouth. If you're only flossing the night before your appointment and you're cleaning away the plaque as much as you can right before your appointment, this is not going to help. It's not gonna get fixed overnight. You really need to consistently do this. So if you start flossing consistently for like two weeks, then you'll notice that your bleeding will really come down. Now the second obvious sign is your cleanings are painful. Now, is there a chance that your dentist or your hygienist is always super rough and trying to hurt you? Maybe, but I think what's more likely is your gums are sensitive. Healthy gums should not be sensitive. So if you're wincing at like the slightest touch of when we're checking your teeth, that's an obvious sign your gums are not healthy. Now it could be something else at the same time. It could also be anxiety. If you're super anxious every time you go to the dentist, but you know you take really good care of your teeth at home and you're brushing and flossing every single day, then your teeth might be sensitive at the dentist. But this could be from anxiety because your anxiety will trigger natural pain response into your body. So everything will feel a lot more painful. So if this is the case, you might wanna talk about options with your dentist or your hygienist to help with anxiety. For example, one common thing is nitrous oxide, or in other words, laughing gas, that will help kind of calm you down for your regular checkups. But what's more common is if your gums are super inflamed, then they're gonna be a lot more sensitive. Flossing is kind of like a workout for your teeth. It'll stimulate your gums, and it'll keep working them out, and it'll also toughen them up. That means that when you go for your checkups and we're doing our periodontal charting, your gums are not only healthier, they're also a lot more tough, so they're not gonna be as sensitive. Because also when you're flossing, you're also cleaning. When you clean, you have less inflammation, and less inflammation means there's less pain altogether. And that actually brings us to number three, which is if you have a lot of plaque and tartar buildup. The first two spots that dentists look for for tartar are your lower front teeth and your upper molars. These are the two most common areas where tartar will start to build up. The reason is because you have a salivary duct in both of those spots that is constantly spewing out saliva, which has a lot of minerals in it, and this can mineralize those bacteria in your teeth and lead to tartar. Now, obviously, we also check your x-rays and your other teeth to see if there's any tartar building up anywhere else, but we talked before about plaque. Plaque is this biofilm of bacteria on your teeth, and it builds up pretty much right when you get home from your cleaning. But the thing with plaque is it's loosely attached to your teeth, meaning you can brush and floss it away at home. You shouldn't have any problem doing this. But once that plaque turns into tartar, and again, this happens from all those minerals that are entering that bacteria in that plaque that harden it and stick it to your teeth, then you cannot remove it at home. Then you have to go to the dentist to get this tartar removed. Now, just because you have tartar, it doesn't mean you don't floss. There's a lot of other things that go into tartar buildup, and sometimes you just can't avoid it. But you can limit it. If you do floss and limit the amount of plaque on your teeth, 
then you're gonna limit the amount of tartar that builds up. But also, if we're seeing a lot of plaque buildup, again, that's that loose biofilm of bacteria, then it's pretty much obvious that you are not flossing, especially for seeing this plaque in between your teeth. Because again, that plaque should be easily removed with your floss and with your toothbrush. Now, the last sign I wanna talk about is if you have cavities forming specifically in between your teeth. Flossing isn't just for healthy gums, it's also for healthy teeth, especially cavities that are forming in between the teeth. Why? Because the only way to clean in between the teeth is with flossing. Now, how do we check this? We check it with x-rays. So when we're checking your x-rays, we're checking a lot of things. We're checking your bone level, we're checking for any tartar buildup, any infections or anything like that, but we're also checking for cavities. And specifically, we can see cavities that are forming in between your teeth. So if we're seeing all these things, we're seeing these cavities forming in between the teeth, we're seeing your gums getting inflamed and bleeding, it's pretty obvious to us that you do not floss your teeth. Now, if this sounds like you, if you've been guilty of not flossing or flossing right before your appointment and trying to get away with it, don't worry, you're not alone. I mean, I see this all the time. So what can you do? Obviously, you should start flossing every day, right? Simple as that. But for some reason, that doesn't really work on everybody. So what I'd recommend is start with a simple plan. You don't have to do it all at once. Try just flossing like once or twice a week and maybe even starting up to three times a week. Slowly work yourself up. Even if you floss just one time a week, it's gonna be way better than doing nothing. And you can also use other tools if you hate that string floss. There's things like floss picks or a water flosser that you can use. And actually I made another video specifically talking about other forms of floss. So I'm putting that link in the description below. So make sure you check that out. No matter what you pick, you wanna pick something that you can do consistently, because consistency is the key, and that's gonna be the best way to stop the bleeding, to get your gums healthier again, and prevent cavities from forming. So with that being said, let me know in the comments section below, do you floss every day? How often do you floss? And do you use something else other than floss to clean in between your teeth? And as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below, and I will see you in the next video. There's been some rumors around that a cavity can heal on its own. You don't have to get that traditional filling from your dentist. So how true is that? Look, I'm gonna be honest here. The real answer to when a cavity can heal on its own is sometimes. I know you hate that answer, but I'm gonna explain why. So let's go over a quick anatomy lesson. Your tooth is made up